Hello students and welcome to topic 10 of alternative and renewable energy sources. The topic we will be covering is solar thermal system engineering calculations. There is an activity with this topic. The activity is recorded and you are to work the activity along with the recording. This slide is a typical solar collector certification and rating technical sheet. This is an enlargement of the upper portion of the certification. Tables directly under the heading gives us typical 1000 BTUs per panel per day for different applications and climate zones. Row A is for pool heating in a warm climate. The clear day is defined as 2000 BTUs per square foot per day. In this case, the table gives us a value of 27,000 BTUs per panel per day for pool heating in a warm climate. The next two columns gives the expected heating for mildly cloudy and cloudy days. Row B is for pool heating in a cold climate. Row C is for water heating in a cool climate. And row D is for water heating in a cool climate. Row E is for air heating but has no values. This is an enlargement of the lower portion of the certification technical sheet. The gross area of this module is 20.73 feet squared. The highlighted portions tells us the materials of the glazing, the materials in the absorber, and the coatings on the absorber. The lower highlighted portion gives us the equation of the straight line which approximates the efficiency with respect to ambient temperatures and solar radiation. This slide gives us an expanded view of the straight line approximating equation for the efficiency of this panel with respect to ambient temperature and solar radiation. The y-intercept or maximum expected efficiency of this panel is 0.66 or 66 percent. The slope of the efficiency line is minus 1.123 BTUs per hour foot squared degree Fahrenheit. Here we begin developing some very useful equations. The useful equation is equal to, I'm sorry, the useful heat is equal to the heat absorbed minus the heat loss. The heat absorbed is equal to the solar radiation times the area times the absorptivity of the absorber times the transmissivity of the enclosure. Here we continue the development of the equations. The heat loss is equal to the area times the heat loss coefficient U sub L times the average temperature of the solar thermal collector minus the ambient temperature. The development of the equation continues here on slide 8. We repeat the equation that the useful heat is equal to the heat absorbed minus the heat loss. We will now substitute in the equations we develop for the heat absorbed and heat loss. This gives us equation in line 2. If we divide through this equation by the solar radiation times the total area, which represents the total energy incident upon the module or panel, we obtain the equation for the efficiency, which is line 3. Simplifying this equation gives us a fourth and last equation. This looks very similar 
to the straight line equation given for the efficiency of the solar panel. We continue the equation development on this slide. In the development so far, we have been using T average. We now need to replace T average with T in, the temperature of the water entering the panel. To do this, we will introduce an unknown called the <clears throat> collector heat removal factor, F sub R. This gives us a final equation, which can be equated to the straight line equation on the panel certification technical sheet. The F sub R <clears throat> absorptivity transmissivity is equal to the Y intercept and the F sub R U sub L is equal to the slope of the efficiency curve. In the technical sheet given above, the y-intercept is 0.66 and the slope is minus 1.133. <coughs> the gray line here, this slide, plots a straight line efficiency curve and a quadratic curve, which is also given on the technical sheet. The curves fit very well together. Here in example one, we assume a transmissivity of 0.95 and an absorptivity of 0.9. We can then calculate the value for F sub R being equal to 0.77. With F sub R known, we can calculate the value of U sub L to be 1.45 BTUs per hour foot squared degree Fahrenheit. Let's calculate the efficiency under conditions described here. The solar radiation is 250 BTUs per foot squared hour. The inlet temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit and the ambient temperature is 40. Substituting in the equations gives us an efficiency of 0.57 or 57%. We can find the stagnation temperature by setting the efficiency to zero and solving for the inlet temperature. Slide 17 shows the calculations leading to a stagnation temperature of 187 degrees Fahrenheit. If there are any questions, please post them on the eLearn help discussion.